and welcome to Faith, Final Drafts, and The F Word. I'm Darla Phillips, a host and producer, along with fellow screenwriters Sarah Hopkins and Rebecca Williams Spindler. Join us as we share our experiences navigating careers in film and television, add in the twist that we're women of faith entering into life's second season, and you might find yourself mumbling under your breath. Good luck with that, ladies. Follow along for some guaranteed laughs, a cry or two, and some valuable screenwriting and industry perspective. Anyone with a dream will enjoy this podcast video. Hope you join in. And remember, we got to enjoy the journey. Welcome back, everybody. Um, this is our next episode of Faith Final Drafts and, and the F Word. Um, this episode is taking place in the uh, Door Peninsula of Wisconsin. So if you look at the state of Wisconsin, it looks like a mitten. And the thumb part of the mitten is where we are. And we are on just on the cusp of autumn where the leaves are just starting to turn. Mm -hmm. And we are safe within a cabin that is built in the 1880s. And uh, we were told to stay indoors because apparently there are bears outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that kind of show. <laughs> yeah. It took a dark turn. Yeah. <laughs> but it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yes. Thank you to um, Frank and his family for loaning us this wonderful place. Yes, thank you so much. Very special. So um, before we get into our topic, which today is about how to put yourself out there, uh, we will just dive right into the three F's. So um, I will go first with faith. So I watched a really um, poignant sermon this week online, and the message was, are you reaching or are you rooted? That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> and I think um, in order, you know, I thought of it in perspective of being a writer, that you are always reaching, right? You always have a story or something that you are trying to elevate or reach to make better. But any story that's worth its salt is also rooted, mm -hmm. right? It's rooted mm -hmm. in experience and, and something that's touched you. So I think... Mm -hmm. I'm walking that tightrope yeah. of being reaching and being rooted. Yeah. All right, so final drafts. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what I come up with. <laughs> final draft wise, I actually, I think I told you guys this last time, I have been dabbling in a little bit of sketch comedy. Yeah. And I recently wrote two 10 minute sketch, sketch skits. And, um, it was super fun. It was super freeing because I sat down and wrote them in like one afternoon. And it was just kind of a fun activity of just letting go and not worrying so much about, you know, this amazing pilot I'm trying to write or this amazing feature that I'm that I'm hoping is amazing. Um, anyhow, it was just a very fun, freeing activity that, I don't know, it may or may not be in a little com uh, community theater um, come fall or winter or who knows. That was a, very I fun to does. do. I hope yeah. so too. It does. I hope it does. I think it will be. And then the other thing, um, I mean, I feel like I have a, a pretty much close to a final draft on a pilot I've been working on. Um, nice. So I just need to be Yay. like, yeah. I just need to be like, bye. I don't know why. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye to you. Fly now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Fly away. <laughs> and then the other things I've been doing, I've been reading, and like I, um, I've talked about this before. The people in my life that I read for. Um, Oh my gosh, a 400 page book for my niece that's so close to a final draft. Let's go Taylor. My son just told me last night or two nights ago, no, last night, that he's finishing up a 400 page. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, okay, send it over. <laughs> <laughs> and then I read Sarah's super fun. I'm not going to tell them the details, but she has a fun pilot she's working on. That was super fun to read, and I can't wait to read that final draft. Um, that is an excellent. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So fun to write. And uh, yeah, you guys are the best. Thank you. So then it brings us to frustrations. Okay. <laughs> Who has ever been somewhere and they need the Wi Fi and there's no Wi Fi, <laughs> there's no cell service, you're so remote and you have either deadlines or something. It's like really the one time technology is just not working in your favor. So that has been my frustration this last week. Um, the beauty of being retired with my husband now is we can go away for a week. So we were up north 
at our cabin and some friends' cabins for a week, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, putting yourself in situations to make yourself uncomfortable to be able to network. And so I was selected for a TV, kind of like TV writing room intensive. It was a five-week thing, and this one week, which is probably one of the hardest weeks to be off the grid and working with somebody and not being able to Zoom with a co-writer, it was just really frustrating that, you know, we technology is a beautiful thing. And I think that was one of the great things that came out of the frustration of 2020 <laughs> was people learned how to Zoom. And it's so nice to be able to feel like you're sitting across the table from somebody when you're collaborating on something and to not have that capability and to have a script bounce back and forth just in emails with email notes where you're trying to like, you, the questions come more from the emails yes. than when, if you could discuss it face to face. So I dealt with not having Wi-Fi and Zoom while collaborating on a script. And it was very frustrating and very hard and very difficult and very much along the, man, I'm trying to make a good impression here. Mm -hmm. And because of not having good technology, I don't feel like I'm making a good impression here. So <laughs> that is very difficult for me yes. to, when I know I have those capabilities, um, but we just didn't have the technology access to it. So that was my frustration. But, you know, again, you, you learn so much out of that. And I'm like, okay, well, guess what? <laughs> Next time, <laughs> I'm going to make sure that if I'm going to be working on a project with a co-writer or collaborating with on somebody, I'm going to have some access to, to bring, some technology. You bring your hotspot. Yeah. Bring well, your I couldn't even get my hotspot going. And then it was like, you know, like when you put the thing in there, like you need to update before oh, you do no. the hotspot. It was like everything, everything possibly the domino effect. And it was very frustrating. <laughs> but here we are. And now we're moving forward. Yes. And she's here with us. And, <laughs> and I'm here there in the day rest. up in Door County <laughs> with my co-writer like, oh, can we meet tomorrow? <laughs> if you've been following, you know, our podcast, Faith Final Drafts and the F Word, you have come across episodes where we have touched on networking and putting yourself out there in the past. Um, but I don't think we've dedicated an entire episode to exactly, you know, what is a fellowship? What is a writing residency? What is a retreat? Um, and, you know, why should I sign myself up for something like this? Should I spend the money? What are the benefits of doing it? And do I even have to do it, period? Or are there other ways of getting yourself out there and connecting with people? Because, you know, you've written this masterpiece. Yes. And you're pretty you're proud of it. Or you're in the midst of it. Or you're in the midst of it. Or, yeah. Um, and you need some feedback. And so where do you go? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and there is no writing group within a 50-mile radius of you, <laughs> but yet you're getting all these emails from these different organizations that are offering you opportunities should you take that step and, and try one of these opportunities. So we will talk about that today. So um, for those of you who are in the TV pilot realm, and you've probably, you know, heard about these different fellowships that are out there with the, the big guns, you know, <laughs> the, the CBS fellowship, the NBC Universal fellowship, um, AT&T and, and Warner Brothers and stuff, and you may feel like, oh, geez, should I even try it? Mm -hmm. And my advice to you is, why not? Mm -hmm. What have you got to lose? Um, especially most of these fellowships, there's no fee. So yeah. it doesn't cost you anything. And thing. if anything, it's a good exercise for you to just read the application, yes. what is required of you, what is required of your story, and then you'll find out. Mm -hmm. You'll find out if your story is up to snuff to even go through that application process, I, I would say don't be intimidated. I think one of the one of the things that I learned in applying for those big ones was a you have to learn how to talk about yourself mm -hmm. and talk about your writing yeah. and have a sample and then have a backup sample. Yes. Exactly. So you kind of have to at least yeah. have a really good grasp of having written scripts that have that are not just ones that nobody's read or given you notes mm -hmm. on. I think it's really really wise mm -hmm. to. Don't waste your time coming into one of these really big fellowships if you haven't if you haven't really honed your craft yet. Mm -hmm. um, so backing it up, like if you're reading the application and they're like, you know, if selected, because this happened to me, if selected, <laughs> we may ask for another backup script or we may ask for another writing sample. And guess what? I didn't have it. <laughs> I got to this certain point and they were looking for another TV pilot sample and I only had co-written with TV samples. Mm -hmm. I didn't have one that was just my own. And so it was one of those things where I was like, wow, what a missed opportunity mm -hmm. that I went through that far to not be able to get accepted on that because I didn't right. have the second thing. So really make sure you, especially for the big ones, is read this very fine print 
as well as how long that fellowship or program might be, if it's in person or not, and it's since, online. Right, yeah. or if it's mm-hmm. online, if you're not living there, are you willing to relocate there? Like right. some of them have yeah. some stipends. Um, some of them are like a paid thing and some of them are totally not. So mm-hmm. you have to really, and, and you shouldn't say no because you're like, well, I'm never moving there. Well, don't, maybe don't be thinking about being a TV writer. Then. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and right. I'm not trying to say that to be um, discouraging. Right. I think that if you're really looking to get into the industry, you're going to have to make some sacrifices. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you look at these fellowships, some of that will entail some sacrifice mm-hmm. for opportunity. Yeah. And that that's the biggest thing that these will give you is opportunities and access. But access mm-hmm. to who and opportunities to what is yeah. what we really kind of want to talk about today is like the specificness yeah. right. of it. And I know we're going to talk about this Imagine Impact later, but I know that's mm-hmm. when we all entered. And um, I remember they just asked specifically, can you be in, mm-hmm. you know, Los this Angeles. area yeah. and it was only for a certain amount of weeks so, yeah I'm like yes right. <laughs> I will be there and then um and like Sarah was saying it was so cool I think there was places you could put um other projects you'd written I think mm-hmm. I was able to even put like a short film I think there was a yes. place to upload short films so yeah just have more than just your mm-hmm. one little <laughs> one, <laughs> one little baby yeah. and uh, before you fill those out okay yeah. Yeah. Well, we can totally pivot, I mean, to, okay. to Imagine Impact, okay. which for those of you who aren't aware, is Ron Howard and Brian Grazer's um, writing program is called Imagine Impact. Yeah. And um, this was really big, what, two or three years ago? 2019? I think 2018 was the first year. 18? I did it 2019, mm-hmm. the second go round, which I can't remember exactly if they're in the same yeah. year or not but so he yeah. did it in the u.s and then i want to say he did it in australia yeah. and mm-hmm. i'm not sure if where he's, they're at now where, where the program is at now and so you had these 30 to 45 days to read everything and load everything and then at the end they wanted the what a 60 second video, video. Yeah. of yes. you oh. explaining why you want to be chosen for this you know program which was nuts. Which I personally love mine. <laughs> oh, and that's why I want us to, to post all of ours. We're going to do that. I told DM you I'm going to send you my blooper. All my bloopers. <laughs> like, oh, my oh my gosh. Like, and then I like start swearing. And I'm like, wait. I love mine. Except for I have like this, this makeup brush hair right here. Like I have a big whisker growing. <laughs> My husband was my cameraman. And I think after like the thirteenth take, he was ready to just throw the phone at me. Oh. Like, You're doing your stuff. <laughs> I was in oh. I was in Santa Monica doing mine anyhow with the, in, you know yeah. I was trying to hide my my surroundings. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But, but yes. Anyway, that particular application I I highly recommend because there were blocks. And each block was more and more in-depth about your story. Mm -hmm. And then when you got to, like, page three, then they said, okay, now tell us about script number two. Mm -hmm. And that's when you're like, uh. (laughs) So you got to have, like, script number two. And I think for Imagine, they even wanted a third one. That was in a different genre or something. Yeah, or a logline or summary of it or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the blocks were just so in-depth. They wanted to know, you know, about the main character and and plot mm-hmm. A and plot B yeah. and oh, so it so was much. so in depth to really make you look inside yourself as a writer yeah. like what yeah and they even asked mm-hmm. you remember if money were no obstacle in your life oh, yeah. what would you do with your money do you remember that like yeah, and I right. had so yeah I remember writing down what I would do <laughs> if money were no obstacle <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I made sure it was something really sweet this was something really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Helpful to others. Right. You also notice none of us got in. So if you were going for world domination with that money, you might have gotten in. Just Dang. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, you're right. You're looking at three losers. Right. That's okay. <laughs> but I don't, but we did get I such a wonderful yeah. Yeah, like rejection from Ron. Oh yeah. Yes. You love that. Yeah. You're like, I'm saving that. Yeah. Ron's speaking to me. Yeah. Yes. But anyway, so when but well, there's one tip. Sorry, didn't go ahead, you go ahead. Do you remember and I'm sure they've improved since then, and I don't know if this is other fellowships if it's the same thing, but I remember getting all of this loaded in 
and somehow I lost it. Oh, I see. Yes. Ah, uh, did that happen to you? Nope. But oh. I, I think I learned that one on the HBO okay. writing access. What, so what's yeah. the tip we can give them to okay. not lose everything you just dumped you in? You either open a Word document so and copy what, and paste it. And or a Google Doc. Okay. Because mm -hmm. then you got it in two different places because if that thing goes away. Oh. And I've done that in I all cried. of my fellowships. And then did you really? <laughs> oh, I lost it all. Oh, I just no. Yes. I was like, oh, no, Mr. Queen. No. no. <laughs> I would cry too because yes. it's it is a very dense yeah. process and a lot of times in those autofill boxes they don't have spell check no. and and also make sure that when you do copy and paste it out of your word document or google doc into that box that box. they have yeah. check your spacing because the spacing is super wonky from the copy and paste into it yes. mm -hmm. so uh, anyway just a tip i remember that being that's weird. a great tip i can't remember all of the things that went weird with that but <laughs> Yeah. The other reason that I did it too was that I would have record of what they were asking for because once yeah. they close that application down, it's not like you can go back and mm -hmm. see no. or even just see what the questions were for like next year. If you're like, okay, if I don't get in this year and that the follow up part of that is keep applying. If this is something that you're really feeling led to, yeah. uh, that was some of the greatest advice. It took my mentor, um, I think it took her three times to get into the brothers one i think oh, yes. and she just kept you know every year better better sample better script they they knew she might have made it in you know the serration mm -hmm. thing they might have remembered or had some kind of thing of like how many years they've applied because i think on some of them you have to put in there yeah how many times you've applied on the and... nickelodeon one they mm -hmm. ask what years you've previously applied and yes. i've heard from people that mm -hmm. run the nickelodeon one that they actually pay attention to like oh this is the fourth time that this person has applied so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so good yeah, good that's tips. all great tips. Yes, for sure. yes, yeah, good tips. Okay, so did we talk enough about the NBC, well, so, CBS, ABC? Yeah, so let's talk about because as part of the application process for these, yeah, they want to know about your story and and you know snippets of your writing. They want to know a bio. They always <laughs> ask for a brief yes. bio, and sometimes it's like two fifty words max. Mm -hmm. and it's like uh, so. I've kind of watched some of these. Um, workshops about these different fellowships so for Sundance the Sundance Institute um, there was one of the directors of that program did a an online webinar and she said that when she's reading these bios that not to knock the fact that you've won this contest and you've done this and done that what they're looking for is what empowers you or lights your fire on your personal side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially if you are active, this is the Sundance Institute, if you're active in anything that relates to social justice, mm -hmm. are you helping with, you know, some topic that you're in a particular club or in a particular mm -hmm. organization? Um, is there something that you're doing outside of your mm -hmm. writing self that's contributing to your community? Mm -hmm. That's what they're looking for in that mm -hmm. bio. Because... Everyone who applies for these usually has some kind of writing resume, mm -hmm. like I've done well in this contest and I've, mm -hmm. had, you know, yes, yeah. yay, great for you, <laughs> but we want to know what makes you tick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so think about that in your little bio. I mean, if you are a Humane Society fanatic and you are, you know, mm -hmm. volunteering at the Humane mm -hmm. Society and showing up and rescuing this, I mean, that yeah. that makes you unique, yes. right? you know, and however else you can... Yeah. It gives it gives them a sense of what your point of view is because mm -hmm. they want they want your stories not necessarily the project that you've just worked on they want your voice mm -hmm. which is your experience yeah. which mm -hmm. are the things that you're most passionate about because right. that's that's the stuff that would, that comes out in your writing that they're going to try to bring out in that fellowship yeah. they're trying to figure out how to champion you to be able to push your career a little mm -hmm. bit farther down the way but it's yeah. it's so much more than just your writing yeah yeah. And it just so it just came to me what I put in for my on the Imagine Impact application. I think I put something about I would I wanted to start up a think tank on how to truly solve homelessness. Like mm, um, yes, you know, and that is passion. Yeah, for you, yeah. For yeah. Real. Yes. and you've had some great ideas mm -hmm. on things like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. think about that. Think about what you can put in your little 250 word bio. <laughs> you will, you will, and you should spend more time on your bio. Mm -hmm. then reviewing the script that should already be solid. <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> that's That script needs to be locked up very tight, as solid as it can possibly be. And then have other people look at your bio. Like how many times have I emailed you guys bios? And your bio should change to what you're applying for too. Like it shouldn't just be like copy, paste, bloop. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, make it very specific to whatever that fellowship is and what they focus on Mm -hmm. and thinking about the bigger picture of what they would be doing for you in Mm -hmm. a fellowship. Sometimes too, like what you were saying that you want to cater your bio to whatever program that you're submitting to. So like if I was to submit to the HBO, otherwise known as Max now, if Max has a a future fellowship, I would put something in there about the White Lotus Mm -hmm. because... Mm -hmm. I am just a huge fan of the the writer director of that show, and and I feel like that show has kind of shaped some of the dark comedy that I write. So I think if you can do some kind of tie in like that, you would be surprised how many people apply for a fellowship and they're not even familiar with the what's genre. on the you know. <laughs> right. I want to go work at NBC. Do you watch anything from uh, NBC? So, oh, you know. So true. So yeah, and yeah. Another little tidbit trick for your bio is make sure you always end it with something that they're going to remember. Mm. And, and shorter, shorter, -er, the better, -er. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like end it with something that they'll always remember. I remember one of the notes that I always got with my bio is that they loved that I like, I would do like little fun facts or something like mm. that. And some of it was on a resume, some of it was on a bio that over the years, yeah. depending on what, it, what they were using it for, what I was using it for, it was always like fun facts, like worst Girl Scout leader ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like funny yeah. things like that. that yeah. they're, they're, it will give them a follow up question to be like, what? there and then like taught my girls how to shave their legs the same day that they learned how to build a fire with flint yeah. you know, like fun things that are going to be like what is there's something what's going on with that yeah. person like what do they have that you want to have a conversation with them about like leave some mm-hmm. kind of little hook or something that when they get on the phone with you to interview you because some of these fellowships it's the follow-up phone interview yeah and they want it. That's what they'll open with. Mm-hmm. Tell me about the being the girl, worst yeah. Girl Scout leader ever. I'm like, I hated selling cookies. <laughs> you know, like, you know, fun things like that. That's going to, it's going to put people at ease and give them something else to talk to you about besides mm. you being this nervous Nelly writer. Like, yeah. please pick me. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, try I think not I did to... that too. That, that's a good uh, I've been good known tip. to drive two hours for a good piece of coconut cream right. pie. Right. Oh, that's like good. that's yeah. that's, yeah. that's yeah. fun little things. If you have the space for uh, it. So you can look at it like it's not so much the it's the hook on you. Because you right. may not have your hook for your pilot or your you know your script, but it's your hook. Mm-hmm. The hook that's gonna hook them on you. Mm-hmm. Good point. So another great uh, resource for you, and by the way, you can Google uh, there's a lot of online workshops, even little tidbits on YouTube, like five minute, seven minute free, videos free. that mm-hmm. give you tips on how to write a short type bio. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. They're out there. You Good can find examples. them. Exactly. Um, so let's talk about the Writers Guild of America because mm-hmm. I know they have a lot of excellent programs um, that you can get on online mm-hmm. that you don't have to, you know, go to LA for, but <laughs> they also have some that you, you know, can attend while you're in LA. So You've been a part of some, you know, great programs from the WGA. Please share those with us. Yes. And, sure. Yeah. So first of all, shout out to the WGA, and we fully support the WGA yes. and the strike right now. Um, I'm really blessed to be still pre WGA, <laughs> but feel like I kind of have a little bit of my finger on the post because I've had. WGA, I've had a WGA mentor for a couple of years because of this program. So um, the Writers Guild of America, it, how you get into the guild is there's a certain point system and there's certain projects that you have to be hired through that certain studio systems have to use, which is one of the reasons that the WGA is striking right now against the AMPTP. And there's a lot, there's, if I didn't know anything about the guild until I got ex- really accepted into this program. And then I was like, wow, there's, this is how this career will continue to be a career and not just a gig and so we need to be supporting our Mm -hmm. wga right now and our wga writers so we can i'm not going to get too (laughs) in the weeds on it (laughs) but i'm just saying we're like we're supporting you (laughs) we stand with the wga (laughs) um so yeah so the um writers guild has a foundation and it's so it's not it's through the guild obviously but this is a foundation that has been fed by all of the guild writers Mm -hmm. and they saw a need specifically to reach out to veterans because veterans have very unique stories, so military veterans. And so they started this foundation, and I can talk just a little bit about it. Um, So the the mission of it is to identify emerging writers from military backgrounds and provide them with tools and insights to nurture their passion for writing 
and then also how to successfully navigate the entertainment industry. So it's a three phase year long program. So it's, it's a long time. <laughs> it's a year long fellowship. And it was, it was invaluable to me where I was at in my writing career at the time. It was just the right time. Weirdly, oddly enough, um, <laughs> my class was July or June, June, July of 2019 to June, July of 2020. Ooh, so yeah. <laughs> they um, originally, it was a program where you had to be in residence. So like every month or it's like, oh, you right. know, they, you had to go to the actual guild library, which if you've never been there, it's amazing. If you go to LA, cool. you have yeah. to go there. It's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> and um, so they would have mentors. They took you up with mentors. You'd have panelists. So you would go and it was a very immersive experience. Um, they always started off with a boot camp. So they did like a, a weekend long retreat where it was like everybody shows up with all of the mentors and they kind of, it, it was baptism by fire. It was amazing. And all of us veterans are like, what is happening here? Like, you know, because it's so different than the military, but it's also you're with all of these people that are here to support you. And you're also with your peers that are emerging writers. Like um, the application process, it's free to apply. Um, there's a couple different things you have to do to apply. So you had to have a writing sample. So I think it was 10 to 15 pages of either a feature mm -hmm. or pilot. Um, you had to have a sample log line of something that you think you want to work on. And I think they've upped that to, I think, three log lines now mm -hmm. of a project that you think you want to work on because that's how they pair you with your mentor. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, is it a feature? Is it TV? Is it comedy? Mm -hmm. You know, like, so the, they try to really make sure that they pair you with working writers. And then, obviously, a, a brief personal statement, 500 words or less. Mm -hmm. So there you go. There's, There's the bio. bio. Yep. And then a copy of your DD-214 um, with your security number redacted um, <laughs> and a full resume. So that's a lot of things Ooh, yeah. that you would kind of have to have. So yeah. sometimes the fellowship piece, a lot of it is timing. Yeah, yes. And where you're at in your career, because I was able to say in my statement, you know, I've been out there on pitches. You know, like yeah. these kinds of things were like coming out. And that I had had representation at the time. So they, there's, a, there's a vetting process that goes along with it. Um, this is one of those ones that I feel like they really work with a very wide variety of writers. So you could be literally only one script because you only need one sample for this. Mm, yeah. Like they're not going to come back and be like, let's show us other samples what or whatever. Like yeah. Yeah. Right. So they, and again, you know, think about the pool of people that are applying for this. Mm -hmm. It's a very small number of people. Oh. So it's not like you're getting... 3,000 mm. applications, they can be pretty mindful of how they're going to do it nice. and how many people and mentorship and stuff like that. Yeah. So got selected for that, um, was paired up with my mentor. It was invaluable. 2020 hit and it, it, it's one of those things where I, I was lucky that I was my, because I wasn't living in LA at the time, like I flew there for the boot camp mm -hmm. and then I had to do like, they did like Remember back in the day when they do Facebook streaming or mm -hmm. what is yeah. that, like a watch Facebook party? Live. Yeah, Facebook yeah. Live or whatever. So that's how they were recording the in-person meetings. And then because I didn't live in L.A., they only had a couple of writers that they selected as remote writers mm. because they needed to make sure that the mentor that they paired them with would have the time to be able to just work one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. Because yeah. otherwise, if you were in residence, after you do your panel at, at every meeting, you meet with your, your mentor with usually three or four other writers and you go through your script. So I got the... <laughs> the blessing and the curse <laughs> of we're getting one on one and she's I, I love her yeah. she's a dear friend she was a great mentor she kicked my butt because she challenged me yeah. in ways that I had never really been challenged yeah. as a writer before yeah. and you know, with a mentor developing tv stories versus feature stories so I, I remember I'd, I'd be out there on a pitch and I'd be nailing pitches but then I'd go to my class and she's like you suck and I, like, oh, like, I thought I was a good writer so it was like Figuring out the things that you're good at and where yes. you need to grow and how different writing and stuff like that. So really figuring out how to develop story was something that I learned from her. Um, basically developing a, pro a, a project, which goes through the full pro process like you would in a TV genre. So you're going to do outline or you're going to do pitches. You're going to do outlines. You're going to have to sit down and have hard conversations about certain themes and tones and where would this land? What's a good comp for it? You know, So you have to have enough knowledge of the industry to be able to not be like what's an outline yeah. <laughs> like, like or what's, what's a, a beat what's a beat or you know yeah. how how what's a a storyline versus a b storyline yeah. and how do you do the c one in there too you know like <laughs> you have to have a, a, a pretty good idea of a baseline story knowledge 
you know, yeah. and that comes from knowing your craft, knowing your craft. Mm-hmm. And, and you can get a lot of those resources online for free. Yeah. Um, but I think the coolest thing that came out of this was as much as it was so, it was such a difficult time because of, you know, the world was burning. Yeah. Um, I learned so much out of it and I was one of the pitches that was selected out of that program. Yay. Yay. Yes. And, and I had a great meeting with an exec at, um, ironically Morgan Freeman's company you know so it's like you you do these things to gain you know it's threefold you're doing it for yourself to build your confidence Mm -hmm. and your Mm -hmm. career you're doing it to you know network get yourself out there yeah Yeah, get yourself out there Mm -hmm. you know get meet the people that are in your programs like don't just worry about you and your mentor you want to you are you're scooping up you're meeting people you're like where what are you doing what am I doing like how who do you know kind of stuff and not in a way that's going to be like take, take, take. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an exchange. You're yeah. exchanging yeah. information and knowledge base and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. And I, I got a great writer's group out of it that mm-hmm. we still get together and talk about projects, mm-hmm. um, which is amazing. And my mentor has championed me. She's put me up for shows, Yeah, you know, so huge, like huge. I had earned that though mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. by going through a very difficult program. Yeah. So I'm really appreciative of it. I probably just talked way too much about it, hey. <laughs> but the WGA <laughs> is very generous with their time and, and these mentors mm-hmm. to invest in an emerging writer for mm-hmm. a whole year yeah. is a huge deal for a yeah. program that's completely free. Yes. Yeah. And so um, a quick thing about that. So maybe, you know, after you've tried the NBC, ABC, CBS, Warner Brothers, and you maybe didn't get in like most, most of them, <laughs> <laughs> think about a smaller, maybe a more niche mm-hmm. opportunity. I mean, just think where you fit and maybe find a program that's more tailored Mm -hmm. to you, you know, a smaller group they're pulling from. Right. If you can do that niche kind of Mm -hmm. thing, if, if there's a topic that your story is about that you've been so passionate about and you've polished it and it's in a particular field, there will be people in that particular field Mm -hmm. that will probably want to read it. And if they love it as much as you do, they can help you elevate it and get it to the right set of eyes. Mm -hmm. So think about that. Think about the yeah. content of your story. Is mm-hmm. there something particular that you're writing about that you could flush out and send it up the river to that particular? Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Yeah. But I also want to add to that before you utilize some of these um, networking opportunities that you might come across, make sure you're sending them something good. Yes. It's <laughs> got to sure. be polished. It's yes. got to be polished. That sure someone more than just good. you has looked at. It. Yes. Yeah. So let's talk about you because you have utilized that kind of avenue. Yeah. So I, so when, so when Becky sent out her notes, I really had to think about what has my journey been? (laughs) Because I have not applied to as many fellowships as you guys have. Like I, I did the Imagine Impact. I, I've done my share of competitions for sure. That's definitely, I think what has maybe paid out for me. (laughs) Um, but I, so I wrote this timeline down because I'm like, what have I been doing for 10 years of my <laughs> life? Which I found out from my timeline, it's more like 12 or 13 years. And um, so I think I, if you guys don't mind, I'm just going to go through some of the things that I wrote yep. down on my timeline yep. that helped me realize like how I network because I don't know, I definitely think I've done maybe a little bit different and got, or maybe gone a little bit mm-hmm different avenue and and some things the same so I started my timeline I'm like when did this thing start (laughs) like when did I and we've talked about how I obviously loved writing but I really didn't get serious until I started um working on a a screenplay for a story that my husband and I had gone through so I'm like I'm starting way back then true story Mm -hmm. so in 2010 is when my husband and I decided we were going to take this story based on IP that was great importance to us <laughs> out to the world. Um, we sent it to congressmen, senators, and a few very well-known journalists. And I think back on this, I probably laughed. Ha, ah, thank you, but no thank you. Um, <laughs> that was my very first, like, I felt passionate enough about a story to like get out of the comfort zone. Like, okay, we're gonna, you know, just throw it out there. Um, 2010, 11, we did attract a producer and uh, his wife, who was a writer, a couple um, who they were telling us that they could get Faith Hill as the female and Jim McGraw as the... Jim McGraw, her yeah, husband. Yeah. Yes, Jim McGraw. Um, anyhow, so they came and stayed at our house. 
So I'm <laughs> so talk about networking, having a producer and his wife sleep in your house <laughs> um, in Red Wing, Minnesota. And because they wanted to get a feel for us, whatever. Okay. Long story short, she did write a script and I read it and I remember thinking, great script, but this is not our story. Mm-hmm. And I That's her rendition of your story. Yes, her rendition, which is great. She probably went off and sold it because <laughs> <sold it, laughs> it was really good. But it, I was like, well, John, this isn't us. This is not our story. Not that it needed to be exactly our story, but um so I said, John, I want to write it. I want to write it. And he's like, okay go for it. And then that was in 2012, I started doing my very first drafts of, um, of wide open. And this is where I think we've talked a lot, uh, past. I mean, I networked with a indie, an indie producer who helped me out and told me to read save the cat. <laughs> I did my own draft. <laughs> and, um, uh, Oh, definitely in 2012, I joined a rigorous, a very rigorous, um, writer's group where I had to learn to take that tough criticism Mm -hmm. and that I will tell anybody who wants to take a journey, you need to get in a group or with a person or a mentor who will give you the tough, tough, Mm -hmm. because that's where I learned to take, um, you know, criticism. They were tough on me. And, uh, I did that for five years and I think, and we just rejoined up again recently. Um, let's see through that group. I went to my very first writers conference in Oshkosh Mm -hmm. and, pitched my story to um john dukakis who is a local um author Mm -hmm. he also did all kinds of other stuff um he liked it and he he said hey oh he also helped me with my query letter all this i was going back through my emails this kind man Mm -hmm. (laughs) he's like send me your query letter he um gave me some tips and he's like okay send it to my agent and um tell him i sent you but that i never heard anything so (laughs) But I'm just but like, to you, have that endorsement no, yes. hurts a lot. Yeah. And I'm looking back going, I did network. I have been networking. I've always been networking. Mm-hmm. Um, there was, um, after that, um, I started writing um, May's story. I rewrote Wide Open. Went to the Madison um, Institute three times. Three times I went to the Madison Writers, Writers Institute. Institute and pitched. I mean, met Lori Shear, who was probably one of the, very gave me very inspiring um, uh, words that kind of to this day still resonate with me. Pitched it in front of how many people do you think were there that night? There was a lot of people. There. Like two hundred people yeah. pitched my log line. <laughs> then I went later. I pitched Lane Shepard, who had ripped my stuff to shreds. She and I actually had a one on one the next day where I pitched her pitched um, wide open the the full pitch, and she was so kind. And I this is what I didn't remember until I went back and read my note. She helped me gave me ideas for my log line and um you know so i'm thinking oh my gosh yes i i've, I've been brave i've been <laughs> <laughs> um then met becky um that same that same 2015 may, may won an award and was published in the midwest i mean not the whole story a page in the midwest review so i can say i'm published <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, met sarah through wsf um Oh my gosh. It just goes on and on and on. I entered um, a true story competition with my very first script of wide open. Um, I remember it was a finalist and I remember the day opening that and just crying because it felt like validation. (laughs) Right. Um, Did that. Oh my gosh. Screen craft fellowship. 2016 is the first time I ever received notes from Cam who would later be my manager. Although he may not really want to claim me anywhere. I don't, I don't know. (laughs) Um, Oh my gosh. Sarah introduced me to Ken. Ken read, my script and gave me great notes. Um, I mean, I pi- I've pitched wide open to multiple execs for the years, um, including uh, Voltage. Remember the mm. and when we were at um, was that that was Nashville, mm-hmm. and when we were all like pitching like crazy, and uh, an exec from Voltage, he liked my pitch and he told me to send him the script, and I did. I actually went back in my email, and I mean these are things that obviously I never heard back. <laughs> But I was putting myself out there and and um, networking and getting my material out there. Um, oh my goodness! And then you oh. made it into a short. Yes, thank you. Short. Um, I created a short film, and from the short film, I was able to um, write the script for another short film that won that won a um, silver a silver spotlight award i don't know i'm just thinking there's different ways like you can you can do so much of um to create your own momentum and mm-hmm. network um i feel like now i know 
I've worked with directors and producers and actors from Wisconsin, Atlanta, Florida. You know, I, I do have a big network. And I'm sorry, I could go on and on and on. There is so much. I mean, let me just show you. Timeline. <laughs> Timeline. Timeline. <laughs> and, um, and each thing, each thing uh, led to, um, I mean, just Atlanta where Sarah and I were there that year and we pitched, we both pitched in front of um, judges. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, that's right. Yeah. And that one of the judges I pitched in front of was Danny Manis and um, that's what got me to go and do his mentorship and where he's, you know, where he kicked my butt, kind of like did the hard thing and, mm -hmm. and put me through the ringer. <laughs> but I learned so much from it. And I hope he, I, mean, I don't know that Danny says nice things about me. I hope he does out <laughs> in the world, you know, I don't oh, he know. Does. He does. And it just goes on and on. So I, I went from feeling really like I'm a loser because I have not applied to a ton of fellowships. But then I thought, you know what? I still am going forward and progressing and my network is growing. Yes. And, um, but the one thing I wanted to talk about, and, and I mean, I'll cut it short. Like there's, I could go on forever and I won't because I'll bore you to death. But you did ask a question about um, networking through, through my church. And I wanted to touch on that because I don't know how you all feel about this, but I was super careful not to network specifically like um hey happy sunday and, here, <laughs> <laughs> and i'm a writer and i'm a <laughs> yes yes so i was very careful um something in me i knew there are a lot of execs in hollywood who are of the same faith as me but i knew i had to go this route like this 12 10 year route whatever it is <laughs> to get some validation through the industry mm -hmm. i knew like if I were to walk up to an exec who I know from my faith or my religion, I know they would not have given me the time of day. I'm sorry. Just because we're the same religion doesn't mean they care when I know about what I've written. They may hate it. They may not like it at all. I was like, I have to go this way. Industry, get some validation, you know, build it this way. And then when I did reach out, um, finally, after I don't even know how long I've been, been at this, 10 years, um, when I did send that email, I did get a very positive response. But through the email, obviously, he could tell I wasn't just, you know, like I had already won awards. I was already had representation. Mm -hmm. I already had things in development. There were, it was like, okay, now, now I can reach out. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, you know, so I guess I just want, I want to make sure that, you know, people know, like, just because you have a network, you might be in real estate, you might be in, in um, PTS or PTA, you might be, you know, whatever religion or faith you are or whatever organizations you're in, you do need to be very careful and not be, I don't know, make sure <laughs> you're yeah. presenting something good. So, okay, talk about blabbing. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be recovered the important parts, I'm sure. That's okay. First of all, you have to be pretty brave mm -hmm. to get out there and talk about yourself because not many of us like selling ourselves, yes. right? We don't like to toot our own horn. I think for most writers, we're just the introverted type mm -hmm. that are just, you know, but in seat, I'm typing, I'm working on my story. And then what? Now you want me to talk for a half an hour about myself? Mm -hmm. Are you crazy? So I think you have to practice that as well with your writers group or with friends yeah. that are also writers or maybe somebody that's in the selling world that can listen to you do your little spiel before you hit somebody up. You know, you just have to practice those approachability yeah. skills. Mm -hmm. And for some people, that doesn't come naturally. And so if you're one of those people where it doesn't come naturally, figure out mm -hmm. how yeah, you can kind of get that piece of you to come out. And here's the thing. I feel like genuine, be genuine. Because if yes. you're just networking with someone to network, you don't really care about that person. You don't care about their life or what. It comes through. Like if if you're just being my friend or I'm just being mm -hmm. your friend because I want mm -hmm. to get what you can give me, mm -hmm. that becomes very, very obvious. It's important to be genuine. I feel like well, and can see through. always said in the past too that it's a give and take. It is. Mm -hmm. It's a two way yeah. street. It should always be a two way street. Mm -hmm. Like they might be able to help you at the beginning or whatever if that's you know yeah. where you're at with the power dynamic of how all that works. But eventually, like all ships rise, right? So mm -hmm. hopefully you're going to be able to either help somebody up yeah. that that person might know or 
maybe this person might have a passion project that they want to work on and yeah. you've maintained that relationship mm-hmm. and you're like, I'd love to help you with that. Like that's your give back yeah. for their thing. Like it should be a two way street. So let's tie sure. that back into our subject, which is, you know, these residencies or fellowships. So let's say you, you've done it, you've gone through something. Um, I've, I've gone through a couple of different Roca Birdie writers fellowships and I've been connected with mentors, but to make it a lifelong relationship, you have to do it's hard. The, yeah, do the, the work, the, the work mm-hmm. and the give and take, right? Yeah. So this is a mentor who, you know, um, Jennifer Grisante, who has talked to thousands of people over the years and given thousands of workshops. And she's so well connected. She's a past um, executive from CBS and worked with Aaron Spelling and all that kind of stuff. But I value her input so much because she has been so deep into the industry. So when she says, you know, I... I'm not quite there. You haven't quite sold it. You're, you know, I feel like you're missing X. Do you feel like you're missing X? And if they, the mentor poses the right kind of questions, they're doing their job. Mm -hmm. And you have to do your job as a writer Mm -hmm. to absorb those questions and take the note. Take the note. Just try it. Right. Just try it. But what I'm trying to get at (laughs) is, you know, if you're in a fellowship, it's a, it's a exact amount of time, eight weeks. One mm-hmm. month, you know, one month, 12 months. How can you keep that relationship going beyond the mm-hmm. fellowship? And that's where you say to that mentor, hey, you've been so awesome. What can I help you with? How do I pay this forward? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they will remember you always. Mm-hmm. And I feel that's my relationship with the mentors that mm-hmm. I've had. It's like, we're human beings. Mm-hmm. We're on this earth for many, many different reasons. Yeah. And if there's something that I know that she's, you know, working on or is passionate about, I'll reach out. Hey, I saw you post about such and such. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. I've been thinking about that too. Oh, awesome. And so you need to just keep in touch with mm-hmm. these people after this fellowship mm-hmm. to keep your name on their mind or your name. I'm sorry. Keep your name on their mind. Because they are so well connected. They will Mm -hmm. come back around to you maybe months or years later because years. You've been years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That you've ingrained on them that you wrote something that touched them and they might refer you someday to something. So Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is if are you still gonna be doing it? I mean I feel like that's a lot of it's longevity. How long Mm -hmm. are we gonna hang in? And if you're still there doing it, you know. Right. So that's something for you. Yeah. So just a quick little tips before we wrap up. Like if you are applying for some of these fellowships, um, there's usually an essay about why did you select this fellowship? What are you looking to get out of this fellowship? So some of the tips that I've gotten from some of these people that are artistic directors of these fellowships say they get a lot of people that write in saying, oh, I want to come to your residency because... um, Sitting in a cabin in Nova Scotia, I'm hoping the muse will strike me <laughs> and I will, you know, finish my greatest American novel. <laughs> they are looking for people that are putting down on their application, like, I am 85% there. I've got this novel. I can see the finish line, but I need, I'm hitting a roadblock. I'm hoping to get away for two weeks to come to your residency to enjoy your accommodations. Because I really think if I unplug from my day-to-day grind, being in your location will get me past that roadblock. Mm -hmm. Or something to the effect of, I am so invested in my character that I just need to unplug from my everyday life to come to your residency so I can just be that character and and really make it vibrant. Mm -hmm. Um, He said that waiting for the muse to strike is so less successful he said that we realize that the project may very well change between the time of of when you apply for that residency to when you are selected so some of these residencies you have to apply like six months in advance Mm -hmm. or maybe sometimes even 12 months in advance Mm -hmm. and so what you send them in march of i don't know 2023 might not be the project that you get selected to go there in september of 2023 but whatever you're submitting, they want to know that you are so invested in whatever that piece project mm-hmm. is, mm-hmm. that that is what you're going to pour your heart and soul into once you are part of this fellowship 
a part of this residency. Mm -hmm. They they can tell if you're applying for any of this stuff if you're just dabbling. Mm, you're that's not a, great a point. dabbler. Yes. You yeah. are a writer and you are trying to get your project to where you need it to be. Mm-hmm. A great place to start. Sometimes mm-hmm. local. Start local. Like you mm-hmm. mentioned the, the. Did you mention the name of this one? This one is called Right on Door County. So it's like W R I T E on Door County, mm-hmm. and it's it's literally up here where we are um, in northern Wisconsin, and they have little cottages, um, and it's a year round uh, residency. So you can go on to Right on Door County uh, dot org to look at their possibilities. But um, yeah, yeah. It, there's all tons yeah, of them yeah, out there. Yeah. Yeah. Mentioned, uh, there's the Wisconsin Writers Association, too. It's got something coming up in October, which this probably won't be posted by then. <laughs> but yeah, there's, I mean, I think of just through my timeline how much those little things mattered in the beginning. You know, I'm not, I shouldn't say they're little, maybe the more local, um, you know, mm-hmm. the things that get you brave. <laughs> the things that, I think that that's a great. Mm-hmm. That is so huge to say. The things that get you brave. Mm-hmm. Yes. And and it's it's never going to be just one project. It's never going to be just one application or one fellowship. Like, this is an ongoing growth thing. Mm-hmm. And making yourself uncomfortable and growing yourself yeah. because – you, you have to do that if you're going to get better at what whatever this industry and this career is. Like, this isn't one of those things where you can just check boxes and be like, well, I did this fellowship and now I'm successful. Like, <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's it's ongoing good. because mm-hmm. writing and art is something that's so subjective and always changing. And it's, yeah. it's this intangible thing that you can never just you know, put in a box and be like, here it is, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Like, it's, it is a really interesting way of having this gift and like like we've talked about this before like god puts that in us yeah and and to hone that into there's seasons to your gift like you didn't write for so many years mm-hmm. because you were raising kiddos yep. like i feel like i'm kind of in that season now i'm like i get to i need to do this yeah. i'm empty nesting i could move to la and write on a tv show now like <laughs> yes. suddenly very we like, all could yes, yes. We, we all could yes. hire us <laughs> It's, it's it, there's seasons to everything yeah. and so when you're looking at things like this like really think about the season that you're in in your writing in your life what you what you want this to be yeah. this dream and it changes and it it's it's never anything static so things like this help it make it grow push yeah. it forward yeah. Yeah. and when you make that right networking connection you will find that that is a gift too. Oh, 100,000. That oh, person or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You'll, you'll just know. You'll feel it. Yep. So we will put some more information on our Facebook page and also at the bottom of this uh, episode on YouTube. We can list some um, fellowships or uh, residencies that we've been a part mm-hmm. of. But thank you again yes. for tuning in. And uh, thank you for hosting us. Yeah, yeah, great thank episode. You. And stay tuned for those Imagine Impact. <laughs> <laughs> Grant us some brave people. Application videos. Woohoo! Speaking of brave. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, I'm Sarah. I live in Wisconsin. It's cold here. I'm over 40, a mom of two teenagers, and a military veteran. The reason that you should select me for Impact 3 is because I don't live in LA. I would take full advantage of this opportunity to be mentored in this very non-distracted, high-intensity, basic training type program. So in the military, basic training is very much like tools and resources to be able to accomplish the mission. And I crave that singularity of focus to be able to really hone in on my new mission and goal of being a career TV writer. This would be an amazing opportunity. Thanks. Hello from Madison, Wisconsin. My name is Rebecca Williams Spindler. I've written over 14 screenplays and developed concepts for at least four television series. I come from a diverse family. I'm an empty nester. I've been writing for over 40 years and I love collaborating with people on film projects. So let me tell you, I feel more comfortable behind the camera than in front of it. I'd love to have this chance of a lifetime with Imagine Impact and to learn from the best. Please bring me to California. Thank you. Hello, Imagine Impact. My name is Darla Phillips, and I am so excited to be applying for your amazing program that I know would propel my latest TV project into production. And as you can see from this line and a few others, I need all the propelling I can get. I literally wrote my first screenplay in my head as I drove to drop off my youngest son at college. And since that day, my ideas for content have been spewing. I hope you like 
my project, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Well, you made it through another episode. Thanks for joining in. For more information on our podcast and videos, be sure to check out our Facebook page with the same title, Faith, Final Drafts, and the F Word. This episode of Faith, Final Drafts, and the F Word was filmed and recorded in Door County, Wisconsin. Thank you, Rebecca, for coordinating, and a special thank you to Frank and his family for allowing us to produce our video podcast here at their beautiful historic homestead.